regarding Savannah's uh, fight against coronavirus. Let's listen to what he has to say. We continue to salute those serving on Savannah's front lines of this pandemic, particularly those in the healthcare field. Uh, from all of us to all of you, thank you. Chatham County has experienced a 479% increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases since last Monday morning. We are now 13th of Georgia's 159 counties in COVID confirmed cases. This was expected as we are now seeing the results of what has occurred in our community over the last two weeks and the result of increased testing. As you are aware, Governor Kemp's statewide shelter in place order went into effect at 6 p.m. last Friday. To be clear, there is only one order in place at this time, and that is Governor Kemp's order. And we will abide by his legal order. That being said, to further protect the health and safety of our city, I've extended Savannah's shelter at home order, which is currently suspended until midnight on May the 1st, in the event that Governor Kemp's mandate expires on April 13th without additional action. Savannah's residential services, residential sanitation services, are now limited to only garbage collection as we practice what we preach, protecting our sanitation professionals by reducing our crews to two employees per truck to ensure proper social distancing. Yard waste, recycling, and bulk item pickup are suspended until further notice. You may use your recycling cart for garbage overflow, but please fill up your trash can first. You can drop off your recycling, yard waste, or bulk items to the Dean Forest Landfill or the Bacon Park Transfer Station. Street cleaning will continue to occur as usual according to its regular schedule. On street parking within the city will be free for the first hour, but admittedly, we're gonna have to fix that. We, we messed that one up. We, we didn't communicate that well. And so the city manager and I will be discussing ways to correct that. Um, you know, we can't send mixed mix messages um, and we will get that addressed. So we will issue some more um, directives about parking um, within the next coming days. With the governor's order allowing some previously closed businesses to reopen, our parking services department um, will be continuing to work. And again, the city manager will give some direction later on in the week in terms of how they will work in relation to what's been going on. As the most intensive period in this crisis approaches over the next week and a half, we will continue to reduce the number of our employees working in our offices. We will close some offices and remotely operate others during the coming days to ensure that our valued employees are as safe as possible. We have worked with the city manager to offer our frontline employees a stipend for their work during this extraordinary period. We will share the details of this program with the city council during our regularly scheduled council meeting on Thursday. I really want to thank those who are taking social distancing seriously. A lot of the areas where we saw big crowds two weeks ago were much better this past weekend. However, there were some events, some gatherings, some stores, some businesses that still do not seem to get the point. I'm again asking some of our local establishment, particularly I've seen some of our social, uh, local seafood establishments and neighborhood discount and dollar stores to please, to please make sure that they control the number of people entering their businesses and the number of people in their businesses at any one time. We've seen lately in our community that big box stores such as Walmart and Home Depot have stepped up to the game 
and they are certainly um, monitoring in a much better and controlled fashion individuals that are in their stores at any one given time. 311 is still a number to call for issues related to the city of Savannah's COVID-19 response, or you can also call 912-651-6565. 912-651-6565. We've also received numerous inquiries from employees and concerned family members of employees of Gulfstream. Um, we have reached out to Gulfstream and we want to make sure that we're able to support them and to make sure that they're doing all they can to support uh, our citizens that work there. Let's continue to work together to fight this virus by staying apart. So I'm asking all Savannians to continue to stay at home unless you are going to work or going to pick up some essential items. Please ensure that your children and those within your sphere of influence, please stay home. Secondly, I'm asking for you to find a way to do something extraordinarily nice for somebody this week. I don't have to tell Savannians about how to be nice but use this as a time to be a blessing to someone else during this week. It could be as simple as a phone call, a kind gesture, purchasing groceries for an elderly neighbor, but do something nice as we go through this time. Thirdly, I'm asking all Savannians to follow the guidance of the Centers for Disease Control by asking that you wear simple face coverings to slow the spread of the virus and help people who may have the virus but do not know that they have it from transmitting it to others. Cloth face coverings can be made from common household items or common materials. Something as simple as this. It is not necessary to wear a surgical mask or N95 respirators as they are critical supplies that must be and continue to be used and reserves for healthcare workers and other medical first responders. So it could be as simple as a towel, as simple as a t-shirt, and we'll figure out a way to send out a video showing how to make your face covering. Be creative, be you, be Savannah. As an additional public service announcement, while you're at home, please take the time to fill out your census. It takes less than five minutes. It took me only four. And I, I remind you that particularly this critical time, every Savannian needs to count. And as we go forth, requesting money and representation from our federal government it is important that Savannah is counted and counted accurately. So far, less than 40% of our city's residents have been counted. We have to do better. So please do your mayor a favor. Call your neighbors and friends and ask them, have they done their census yet? By filling out the census and being counted, you'll make sure that Savannah has what it needs to take care of our community for the next 10 years. It's simple, it's easy, and going to, is going to www or 2020census.gov to fill out yours. 2020census.gov. You also now can watch your government at work from your own home. Your city council held its first video meeting yesterday afternoon, and we will do the same for this Thursday's regularly, regularly scheduled council meeting at 2 o'clock p.m. We had a little bit of some bumps in the road, but uh, we got it done and want to thank our city staff uh, for helping us get up to speed. And, and we're ready to go. We're rocking and rolling. You can watch these meetings on the City of Savannah's Facebook page, YouTube, and on SGTV Comcast Channel 8. Finally, I don't think this to be coincidental, but I cannot help to take advantage of the moment and underscore the importance of this moment and the significance of this week to millions of people around the world. Tomorrow at sunset, 
our Jewish neighbors will celebrate Passover, the Exodus, the freedom of slavery of the Israelites from ancient Egypt that followed the 10 plagues. And as you know, for Christians, we celebrate Holy Week, which chronicles Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, culminating with his trial and crucifixion on Good Friday. And I remind all of you, that although times might seem rough now, and they must have been for them, and while people might have been scared and confused and anxious about what was to come, as we are now, we have the benefit of knowing that although there were plagues around the land, the children of Israel did escape Pharaoh's hand. And although Jesus Christ was crucified and the world at the time seemed dark, there was a resurrection. We just have to get from there to here. From our virtual bondage of social distancing to our actual freedom, and from the apparent death of hopes, dreams, and livelihoods, we will see them resurrected bigger, better, and stronger. Please let us continue to focus on what we will be on the other side of this. Let us focus on the dreams that will be restarted on the other side of this. Let us focus on how our community is gonna come back in a way that has been unprecedented on the other side of, of this. We continue to keep the faith, but we will continue to follow the science. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless the city of Savannah. That ends my prepared remarks, and I will entertain any questions at this time. Sir, can you elaborate on the parking, the free parking, and what went wrong there? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, you know, I think that is with, with employees working all over the place and moving all over the place, somehow or another wires got crossed. We have to be clear. We have to be consistent. Um, and everybody has to know what the game plan is. So it's, it's kind of like when you have a, a football play and you, you think you're going for a run and then somebody did a pass. Um, whatever it is, everybody just needs to know what it is. Um, city manager is aware and is taking proactive steps to address it. Um, and again, he'll come back to us about what the plan is actually. I mean, again, it, it happens. Um, you know, we're clear about that. Um, you know, people make mistakes, and so we'll, 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 we've identified it. We'll claim it, and we'll fix it. Are those people being taken that shouldn't have been? Is that what happened? Um, again, it's just the, the the whole process of how that rolled out. And again, um, people have not. We have not met like we usually meet. You know, we don't work in sync like we usually. Uh, everybody's all over the place. Emails got missed. So again, I. I you know, city manager is aware of it. Um, he's proactively, um, you know, have discussed with me ways to be able to fix it, and I'll just leave that to him to be able to fix it. But, um, you know, at the time of all of this going on, the last thing we need to be talking about uh, is this. But on the other end of it, um, we have a very um, fragile parking fund um, that has to be maintained. So, again, we have to balance um, the needs of all of, of those um, interests at the same time. Um, the city manager, do you, I'm sorry, sir. That's okay. Thank you. It, it was a bit of miscommunication. Uh, what I instructed parking services was not to enforce any, any violations for on street side parking through the end of March. But as what happened, they took that to mean free parking. I did not mean that because what that does is it directly impacts the parking garages. And the two most fragile funds right now are the general fund because of the loss of the sales tax and the hotel motel tax, but also the parking fund. And as the mayor said, it's, it's a very slim margin right now. The problem with free on-street parking is that uh, folks don't park in the parking garages. So uh, I, I do agree with the mayor, though. There, there's been a lot of confusion. Any tickets, any citations issued Monday and today w will be forgiven. Those will not be enforced, and I am going to meet with parking services just to go over the full spectrum of all the services that parking provides. Parking services provides, for example, the downtowner. Uh, we may eliminate the downtowner in lieu of allowing free, on, free street parking again. So that discussion will take place this afternoon, and then I'll make that message clear to the mayor. Mr. Mayor, 
thank, thank you, Mr. City Manager. And again, you know, things happen. Um, I think it's important for us um, when things, um, when we miss a play, um, to, to, to own it, identify it, uh, and, be, and be able to fix it. So I thank the city manager uh, for doing those things. Yes, ma'am. About the same. <laughs> and I understand that numbers uh, caused a lot of consternation in the community. $150,000 a day sounds a lot, $4.5 million a month. But remember, the city has in total six different funds. So the most funds impacted are the general fund, which is the day-to-day -day operating expenses of the, of the city, and secondly, uh, the sales tax. So the, the problem with the property, with the general fund, its main source of funding is property taxes. So those are divided in, in a spring billing and then a fall billing. So if you take a look at the general fund, $208 million, it comes out to approximately $17.7 .7 million a month. So expenses are fairly even month to month. City expenses are going to average somewhere between 15 to $18 million. The first sales tax, the, excuse me, the first property tax collection that the billing went out will be about 36 million. So there's a little bit of a hole because of the loss of the sales tax, the reduction in the sales tax, which generally averages about $4 million a month, and also the hotel motel tax, which averages about a million dollars a month. So there is this hole. So, but the, the city is fortunately in a strong financial position. I sent out to the council, some council members asked questions about the city's overall financial strength. Taking a look at our peer groups in Georgia, those governments of the same size, City of Savannah is ranked the highest. So the City of Savannah is fortunate because of the professionalism of both the budget office as well as the, uh, the chief financial office that the, the city has what's called a sales tax stabilization fund of five and a half million dollars. Just for times like this, the city can draw upon that. In addition, the city has a healthy general fund balance of about $38 million, can draw on that. But just as importantly on the expense side, I have suspended all travel. That's going to save a million dollars. I've suspended all maintenance contracts. That's going to save about a million dollars. The city's operating at about a 10 to 12 percent vacancy rate. So that's going to probably save five to six million dollars. So if you add all that stuff up, the city's in pretty good position. Uh, what I'm desperately trying to do is avoid furloughs. I do not want to disrupt the, the, the work of our employees nor their uh, financial security so that the city, I think, can weather the storm as long as there are no extraordinary expenses out there that we are not anticipating or that this prolongs beyond uh, through the end of May. If it prolongs through the end of May, then I think the city will have to take a look at some additional cost-saving measures. Thank you. I think it needs to be also added that um, the city um, is not able to sustain this indefinitely. So there is a breaking point for the city as well. I also don't hesitate to remind you all that uh, June 1st becomes hurricane season. And so therefore, we're looking at that date coming as well, uh, the preparations that we have to make um, for what might be a very uncertain uh, hurricane season. So um, there are a lot of numbers floating around. Again, I thank the city manager and our budget team, management staff uh, for doing what they can to make sure that we're able to at least be stable right now. And I've heard from uh, cities across the country, and some are already uh, in furlough situations. Um, they just are not going to be able to withstand it. Um, we're, I think we're, we're OK now, um, but I think it's, it's also day to day. Mr. Mayor, I know that you extended um, Savannah shelter in place uh, to May 1 in the event that Governor Kemp's expires on the 13th. Do you expect him to extend? Um, would you like to see him extend? What are, what are your thoughts about his declaration? Um, his declaration is his declaration. His order is his order. We'll follow uh, his order. Um, we in Savannah prefer some more restrictions. Um, probably at this date and time, we probably would have moved to even more restrictions again because we know from the science that uh, these next two, next two weeks are going to be um, uh, pretty, pretty hard. Um, the Surgeon General referred to it as uh, Pearl Harbor, so to speak. And for those of you who remember Pearl Harbor, uh, you know that was a devastating um, time in our history. So for us, we will want to do some more. Uh, again, uh, you know, the governor's order is, is by his wisdom. Uh, for us, um, if it expires, then we'll, we'll have ours ready to go. 
We want to be prepared. Seeing the situation that's going on there and knowing that this kind of situation is going to be escalating across the country, do you feel that there is people here are understanding the gravity? Because I think a lot of folks here kind of, you know, they see the nationwide map and they see that Savannah is just a tiny little red dot compared to like Atlanta. And, you know, I mean, going around the streets, going to Home Depot, going to these places, a lot of these folks don't really seem to quite get it. How do you feel about that? Um, from family and friends that I know that have been affected. Um, I guess I have a unique vantage point um, because I have skin in the game, so to speak. Um, I, I know and fam I'm familiar with the places and the hospitals uh, in New York that, um, that when loved ones pass away, um, their family members can't even be with them. Um, that's how bad it is. There are no visitors allowed in the hospitals. Um, that they are even talking about contingency plans in New York and temporarily burying those that have died because there are so many bodies. Um, I, I don't know what it will take for people to recognize and understand the gravity of this. We have been a relatively blessed community so far. We have not experienced the devastation um, that some cities have. But you only have to look at Albany, Georgia. I spoke to uh, Mayor Dora yesterday um, and again to extend our support to him and his city for what they're facing. Um, they are a relatively small community in Georgia. However, they have the second largest number of COVID-19 confirmation cases, com confirmed cases, second only to Fulton County, which is much larger. Um, this is a very serious way of life. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that Savannians get the point. Uh, some, frankly, are just not. I mean, there's just this air of invincibility to, uh, to uh, some of our neighbors that I think is, is, is foolhardy, I think is dangerous. Um, and so therefore, if people don't care enough about themselves and protect themselves, if they don't care enough about those they love to protect those that they love, um, all I can do is make sure I protect my city and those that serve our city. Uh, hence why you'll be seeing less of us over the coming days, which is why uh, you will see our citizens and our employees walking around um, with face coverings because the science says that this is real. Um, and it would not take too much to wipe out a city like Savannah. Um, I know it is nerve wracking. I know it's hard you know, to just be in the house, um, you know, for, for that amount of time. I know people's children are probably driving them crazy. Um, I know some people's spouses are probably driving them crazy. <laughs> um, thank God I don't have one, but um, I just drive myself crazy. Um, but this is just necessary. Um, it is very similar to a hurricane. We see it coming. We know it's coming. So what do you do? You seek shelter. You hunker down until it passes. The same principles are, 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 are in play. We see the, the COVID-19 wave coming. We've gone up over 400% in just seven days. We hunker down. We shelter in place until it passes. Fortunately for us, we still have electricity. Fortunately for us, we still have uh, water and those essential services. Um, yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it's uncomfortable. But yes, we can make it through it. But we have to have common sense about this. I'm still riding around seeing folks at basketball courts. I'm still seeing people standing in line in, in, in you know, like I said, seafood places. It was like, is seafood that important right now? I mean, and all these people around food that you're going to eat. We, we have to exercise common sense. And I'm just asking Savannians, um, please, to um, exercise common sense um, and, and let us ride this out. We, we, we know that there's an apex period, um, and we know that the next two weeks uh, are going to be a little rough. So let's do like Savannians do. Um, let's man up, let's woman up, 
and let's ride it out. And Mr. Mayor, the at-risk population here in Savannah, I know there have been steps taken, you know, um, water buffaloes and things like that. Um, but a couple of weeks back, we talked about porta potties. I know that was a huge thing for them, and you said you were working with partners yes. to figure that out. Um, what's yes. The on that? We'll, we'll provide an update to City Council on Thursday uh, about what our efforts have been uh, to, to the date. Um, you know, the interesting thing about that is you can't have people shelter in place when they have no shelter. Um, so this is really the impetus for Savannah becoming the beloved community that we know that it can be, um, not only to now provide temporary housing, but also to investigate ways of providing uh, permanent supportive housing, not only for those who are chronically homeless, but for those that are also transitionally homeless. Um, I received a phone call the other night uh, from a young lady who was um, you know, sleeping in a car with a three-year-old. And we were able to utilize some local nonprofits to, to get her placed. Again, I mean, you know, the face of homelessness is different than what we think it is. And because of this, the face of homelessness is changing. Um, I want people to know, and people are very concerned, um, we don't have any control over evictions or mortgage payments. Um, although people think we do, we don't. Um, but I will tell you, because there's an emergency judicial order, um, our magistrate court is not processing uh, any evictions at this time. And our sheriff has indicated that he is not performing any evictions at this time. So although your rent might still be due, um, you know, at least you're gonna at least rest that you're not gonna be put out of your house during this period. Do you want to ask one more question? Sure. So I can't understand how a picnic in the park could be done effectively with social distancing. Six feet away, I mean, you're yelling across the park, you know, hey, you enjoying yourself? I mean, again, let that go. I mean, um, and again, I think it's a cavalier attitude of some people just saying, you know, it's not affecting me. It's affecting them. And as I'm so fond of saying, we are they and they are us. Um, we are Albany. We are New York. We are L.A. Um, and they are us. This is a human emergency, and we're asking people to just utilize common sense. This is not the time to do your picnic. Um, you could do a wrestle on, on Facebook. You know, people were doing a virtual picnic, and I almost joined it myself. Um, but you know, if that's what you have to do to stay connected. And I think the funny part about it, social, social distancing is an oxymoron. Um, we're, physically, um, we're physically disconnected, but we remain socially connected and spiritually connected. Um, we just have to exercise some common sense. Anything else? Well, thank you all. Yes? Have you heard from the hospitals uh, about their capacity, their readiness? I, I remember in the call last week, uh, Alderman Leggett said that they have plenty of supplies and everything. I have been in contact with our, um, our hospital systems um, on a pretty regular basis. I'll probably reach out again today. Um, I think the Savannians, um, should feel fortunate that we have um, among the best medical care professionals in the world, with two of the greatest health systems in the world, with two of the best um, federally funded primary care centers in the world. Um, these are professionals who are at the top of their game um, and they can handle it. Right now, I believe our capacity um, is um, sufficient to handle um, the, the COVID-19 progression, um, I don't think they're prepared to handle an outright outbreak, which is why, again, it's so important for people to, to heed these warnings. Um, it's a very delicate um, uh, balance that has to be struck. Um, I see in New York where the Jacob Javits Center, which is a, a huge convention center um, uh, in New York on, on the west side, is now being used as a 2,500-bed hospital. We don't want to have to do that uh, here in Savannah. Um, we can handle this within our, um, our medical facilities as long as people follow the science, as long as they do what our health professionals tell them to do, as long as they stay home, as long as they social distance, and as long as they cover up. You have a picture of that? Yes, cover up. <laughs> Thank you.
Come on, man. Come on. No, go ahead. You can only hold that smile for so long. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Sir. All right. Mr. Mayor, actually, one more question. Sure. <laughs> have you heard from the governor at all? I have not heard from the governor. I have not. I well, we, 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 heard from the, we got the order. So. Since then? No, we have not. All right. Well, thank you all again. Thank you for all that you do. Um, during these very trying times, I'm glad to see. I see coverings. I see it's good for you. Um, wipe, yeah, wipe those cameras off. God bless. Thank you so much.